What's up my peoples and welcome to another episode of The Wheel Life. My name is John and today we're going to continue our story, our story from last video. So I started with my accident video, how I got hurt and you know how that affected my life. And today I'm going to share part two of that, which is how my faith was shaped throughout this accident. You know, a lot of times in people's lives, when a person goes through a tragedy, there are usually two routes a person can take in how they react to God. You know, there's one way where they run away from God and blame God and get bitter and angry, or there is another way where they run towards God and find peace and contentment in who he is, right? And I'm going to talk today about the, the route that I took after my accident. So to tell this properly, we're going to hop in a little time machine and go back to when John was a wee child and his childhood, right? So I grew up as a kid in a very Christian home. You know, I was always surrounded by prayer warriors, by holy rollers, my gram, my mom, my aunts. They all played a huge role in my life and my faith, you know, both pre-injury and post-injury. So growing up, you know, I grew up in a Christian household. I went to church on the weekends. I went to Sunday school. All that stuff, you know, when I was 13 years old in youth group is when I actually got saved and accepted Christ as my Savior. Um, so I definitely had a relationship with God pre-injury. You know, I definitely knew who God was. I definitely believed in God. But sadly, I wasn't overly living it out. You know, if you knew me pre-injury, if you knew me as I got later into my teen years, you would have no idea that I was a Christian. You know, you had, you had no idea. You know, I just, I started to drift farther away from God. You know, friends and partying and all that stuff really started to take the front seat in my life, like a lot of teens happen, you know. But So, like I said in my last video, I was 17 years old when I was paralyzed in a car accident. And in one night, I went from a regular fun-loving, carefree 17-year-old to a, a C6 quadriplegic in one night from one choice. You know, my whole entire life changed, you know. And for some people, when an accident like this happens, it's really hard to see where God is in this mess. You know, it's hard to see what God is doing in our lives, you know. Is he really going to work all things out for good in the midst of our chaos? You know, after my accident, you know, after everything that went on, despite all that hardship, when I opened my eyes in the intensive care unit, I just remember this feeling of knowing that God had a purpose for this accident. You know, sure I had doubts, <laughs> sure I was very confused, but I just had this nagging feeling that God was in the midst of all of this chaos and that he would end up working it out for good, you know. And when I was first hurt, of course I asked questions, of course I questioned things. I used to ask all the time, why couldn't you have at least just left me with the use of my hands? How much easier would life be if I had my hands? You know, it's okay to ask God questions. The real thing is if we can handle his answers, right? Uh, but what's amazing is what I've learned is God doesn't need an able-bodied person. He doesn't need a, a, a strong young man or whatever. He just needs someone who's willing to surrender their lives to him. And through this broken body, through your broken body, through your broken life, God can shine his glory through. And that's amazing, right? That's just awesome, you know? So I've had a lot of physical battles. I've had a lot of emotional battles. You know, after my accident, I struggled with anxiety. I developed PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And I really battled with that for a long time. You know, 1 Peter 5 eight says, Be alert and a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You know, see, Satan, he's always looking for a little crack to get into in our lives. And if he sees something that he can just get a foothold on, he will wreak havoc in your life. You know, I had anxiety, and, and that was a hard struggle for me. You know, and I just was real scared all the time. I thought something was always going to happen to me, but I come to learn that God is bigger than anything Satan 
can throw at us. You know, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, through all the ups and downs in my life, I have learned that God is the great physician and that he is ultimately in control. Through all my health issues, you know, he has held me in his hands and carried me through it. In Isaiah 26, 3, it says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You know, like I said, when I was first injured, I couldn't really see why this had happened. Sure, I believed that God was going to work this out, but I didn't quite understand. I didn't know what God was doing in my life. And I think every single one of us can relate to that. When something bad happens in our lives, we often can't figure out why. Because we can't see the future. But that's okay. We don't have to see the future because we worship a God who does, who knows the future. And all he asks us to do is to trust him, even if we can't clearly see what is coming from our mess, right? I remember being 17 years old. I remember being freshly hurt, lying in that hospital bed. And, you know, I felt so alone. You know, a lot of my friends bailed. Um, you know, I just, I felt alone. I felt like an outcast. I felt like this injury and this hardship that I was facing had severed my ties with the outside world. Besides my mom, my sisters, uh, my family. Um, you know, even when I came home from the hospital, I just, I felt so cut off because I felt like no one was bothering with me. But during this time of aloneness, I found some great news. I found my best friend. <laughs> Like people let me tell you about my best friend. I found Jesus, right? I learned that nothing I went through, that my sicknesses, that my surgeries, that my wheelchair, that my health issues, that every hardship I faced had never once separated me from the love of Christ. I felt separated and abandoned by many people in my life, but I have never felt separated and abandoned by my Heavenly Father. You know, if you ever feel alone, if you ever feel like you have no one, just know that that's not true because Jesus loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. You know, I remember many times lying in the hospital bed with a heavy heart, feeling alone. I'd be so down and out of nowhere, you know, a nurse or a custodian or a worker of some kind would come into my room and they would look at me out of the blue and they would say, God loves you and God has a plan for you. And this happened all the time. Wild, right? You know, but it was in these moments that I realized that God was right there, that God was by my side, that God had my back and that he never, ever left that I was never once separated from Christ. I've been in this chair for almost 14 years now. And you know, many people ask me, how can you, how can you believe in God after what happened to you? And I just look at them and I say, after all I've seen, how can I not believe in God? You know, I feel him with me every day and he has carried me through this. You know, God is literally my best friend. And um, my relationship with him has only grown stronger from this accident. Like I said at the beginning of this, you have two choices. You can either run away from God or run towards God. And I've found my peace in God. And I'm forever grateful for that. You know, so many of us go through such hardships in our lives. And Jesus tells us to, to come to him, all who are weary and burdened. And he will give us rest. And I find my rest in him. And I'm forever grateful for that. So... That's my story of my faith. You know, God has allowed me to live my life, to, to be able to do many things for him, and I'm so beyond grateful for that. And I just, I can't wait to see what the next 14 years bring. You know, God is good all the time. We worship a mighty God who loves us and wants to be involved in our lives. And so, yeah, that's my story. Um, I hope you guys 
enjoyed it and are blessed by it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. You know, let's have a let's have a chit chat. <laughs> I hope everyone has a great week. I look forward to seeing you again. Maybe I'll do some cooking videos next. Um, anyways, take care. God bless. Let's go.